So Tony, my final question for you is, can you give tips on how job seekers can tailor their job search approach to align with their career goals and aspiration, ensuring that they are targeting positions that are right for fit for their skills and interests? Because we know that in an own personal notice, as an immigrant or a sometimes international student, we need to find a job to fill the bills. And at the end, sometimes we become desperate and we say, I don't care what the job is as long as I can work and pair. But I tell them those are those are uh, temporary jobs or those are transitional mm -hmm. jobs. And don't, uh, don't get up caught on that. Make sure that while you are working, you're networking, your LinkedIn is well, as we spoke in previous video. But sometimes yeah. people feel uh, stuck in and they cannot go back to their uh, inspiration. What tips do you have? Yeah, and and it and it's very natural, right? Again, yes. you know, for all the reasons we all have our, you know, back to your earlier question, we all have our unique story, our unique context. Yes. So uh, at any given time, different things are going to influence us or motivate us. So I think that's that's it's useful to acknowledge. But it's also as you said, and sometimes those jobs we take because we need to eat and yeah. have a place to live. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a place for those, and sometimes those can link in well to the types of things we want longer terms sometimes they have very little in yeah. common that we can take for the thing and somewhere it's and sometimes it's somewhere in between mm -hmm. but again every experience is a learning experience but again it's useful to keep in mind you know as you're dealing with shorter term whatever you need to do again give your permission be kind to yourself yes. what you need to do whatever to get through whatever period is what's right for you yeah but but at some point where you have that little light or the thing of imagining your, uh, you know, your longer term aspirations. And the way I like to look at it is I sort of break this up a bit. Mm -hmm. First of all, I like to think of longer term, like the, these aspirations, I use the line, and this is where language for me is quite important. Mm -hmm. This idea of thinking of it in terms of possibilities as opposed to hard goals. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, you know, I've become very resistant to the language of goals in career. Mm -hmm. Partially says, again, most of the evidence I've come across is that very few people end up doing what they initially thought they were going to do. Yes. Right. So you could end up being somewhere and being quite happy and things work out. But if it's different than your initial goal, you haven't met your goal, but that's okay because you're actually happy. Yeah. So I think the idea of possibilities and again, viewing possibilities as this thing to aim towards and whether or not you get there, is not what's important, but it's using it to guide you. So, so that you yeah. have something, and then on the way to that journey, again, you might, for some people, they might continue there, or as you move on, you may, oh, you may discover other things, or you may think, oh, there's blocks there, or whatever it is. But this, yeah. like, again, it's more that we want people to aim towards something as opposed to being stuck on a specific mm -hmm. endpoint, because yeah. we can't control the endpoint. What I often like to say is, um, you can, you, you can, you know, in terms of choice, you can choose to pursue things. You can choose to engage and do these things, but you don't choose the outcome. Yes. The outcome, th th there's so many other factors and other people who might be choosing that. Yeah. So first and foremost, don't put any additional pressure, you know, think of it in terms of a possibility that you're working towards and with, and doing this again, stay open-minded. So as you keep moving towards something, be flexible enough that if other opportunities may be better or shipped or whatever, you're open to that. Yeah. Then though, then as you're in for, as you're in this journey, looking at specific opportunities, specific positions, again, back to your concept of tailoring is put yourself in the employer's shoes, put yourself in those. Sh and, um, and because a lot of it, when we're, we're doing applications, we're so caught up in ourselves. Okay. What yeah. have I done? What have I have to offer? But you have to think of the person reading it. Yeah. Okay? Make so it easy I, for them to read. Yeah, make it easy for them to read and also make it sound like what you've done, right? Think about, you know, the parts of your application. Think of your parts of your credentials, whether it's your schooling, your work, that most looks like what they're looking for. Yes. Right? And how do you reframe what you've done? This is the part you're in control of. Mm -hmm. You can't go back in time and change your experiences. You change no, your you credentials. Yeah. But you have control over how you present it as long as you mm -hmm. don't lie. Right. Yeah. We don't like that. So again, think about how do I frame this in a way so people can see the stuff, make the job easier for them. And then and then and then all that other stuff again, remembering that these are busy people, often many things make it easier for them to read. This yeah. is where good formatting, clear language, all of that stuff comes into play as well. Those are great tips, Tony. Thank you very much. And with that, my interview comes to an end. I really enjoyed the conversation. And for the audience, please uh 
check the other videos that I've posted during the week. You can comment, share, you can reach to us if you have any questions and tune in next time for another great case I'm preparing for you guys. Again, Tony, thank you very much and let's keep in touch. Bye everyone. Thank you.